have a cue. What you gonna talk about? Yeah, I got two shots. I'll get you one. Tonight, almost live and nearly from Hollywood, it's America Tonight. 30 minutes of big time TV on the UBS network. Located on the UBS Broadcasting Mall in El Tacoma, California. The unfinished furniture capital of the world. With Tony and Jenny DiPronto, who will dance on your car. Mr. Jason Shine, who rents himself to women. The beautiful Ms. Barbara Felden, who has reason to be here. With the music of Happy Kind and the Mirthmakers. And me, I'm Jerry Hubbard. And now here's your host, the toast of the coast, Mr. Mark Kimball. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry, and Happy Kind and the Mirthmakers. Good evening. And welcome to America Tonight. I am Barth Kimball. Okay, we all... Oh, wait, come on, we already applauded. All right. Great. Good. Now we're right on time. Uh, you know, I think, when I said America Tonight, I think the word America conjures up, probably in all our minds, uh, the idea of a lot of people in different states. Okay, it's, uh, it's no different with America Tonight. It takes a lot of people to put on a show of this caliber night after night, and it's unfair in a way that the, that the only people who get stopped in the market and asked for their autographs are Happy and Jerry and me. <laughs> well, Happy and me. And uh, I think it's time to put the spotlight on some of the little people behind the scenes, to meet them up close and personal, which is the ABC way, but we use it here at UBS because we don't have our own way yet. So, tonight, first of all, let's take a moment to meet Mildred Kramer. Just like anywhere else. She didn't want her picture taken. We just barged right in the door. We sent one of the girls in, you know, and just took that thing and kind of caught her unawares. Just like anywhere else, mornings here at UBS begin with coffee. Piping hot and plenty of it, and that's Millie's job. Better be good, because if it's bitter, so are we. And if it's weak, so are the scripts. So a big tip of the America two-night fedora to the best darn coffee lady in the entire building, once again, Mrs. Mildred Kramer. Hey, Millie. Millie, where's the sweet and low? <laughs> Only kidding you. <laughs> now, you know, earlier I mentioned scripts. Well, the last time I checked, they don't walk from office to office on their own two little feet. Mm -mm. They have to be carried by people who really know how. And no one knows how better than our own master courier, Ted Friendly. That's Ted. After six and a half years as our courier, Ted, if there can be such a thing as a, as a moving fixture, you're it. And uh, we're really gonna miss you. <laughs> Only teasing. No, you're not fired. What happened Friday could happen to anybody, Ted, and we love you. Okay. And you know, um, furthermore, cars don't park themselves. Now, those aren't my words. I wish they were. They are the words of the great young gal who parks our cars here at the UBS Mall, Inez Escobar. This is very good. Inez is a visitor to our country who actually drove up here all the way from her native Guatemala. Inez, I take back everything I've ever said about women drivers. You are the best. And uh, one scratch on that new paint job, and it's back to the land of beans, earthquakes, and babies. <laughs> Again, I'm only kidding, Inez. I'm sure it's a very nice place. Well, <laughs> doggone it, I wish we had enough time to show you all the shining faces of all the wonderful people behind the scenes here. Here's one in front of the scenes, yes. Jerry. Okay. I think Jerry will agree with me that we see the son of the guns around here every day. They're like part of our family, and I suppose if you're a regular viewer, you'd probably like to get to know our family just like we'd like to get yours <laughs> to know yours, if there weren't so many of you. But um, that's why the nice folks down at Gimbal Co. Press have encouraged me to put together a really beautiful little 12-page photo album of all the little people here at the show. Jerry? It's called simply Meet the Crew, and it's uh, jam-packed with photographs three of them in color, incidentally, and they're dandies. Again, they're taken by our photographer, and her photos are always out of sight. Uh, it's your opportunity to get to know all of us just that much better. Rush, $6, and 
send your name and address to P.O. Box 78924, El Tacoma, California, 94991. Right. And it'd be a good idea to get your copy while all those wonderful people are still working here at the station. Too. That's right, because we have a pretty good turnover. Yeah. So, anyway. Without, uh, without these people, uh, this show would be nothing. Right. Okay. Well, we have other people, too, who can sometimes add up to nothing yeah. and sometimes make it something. And that's yes. the kind of show we like when it's something. That's Occasionally, right. we'll have one that's nothing. And uh, you'll watch it anyway because you love us and we love you for it. <laughs> anyway, any rate, my first guest tonight also happened to be uh, one of my new sponsors. They're well known here in the Quad City area for their ballroom dancing styles, and they're very good. By day, they're known for some darn good deals on late model used cars. I think you know who I'm talking about. Here with a message for DePronto's used cars are Tony and Jenny, the dancing DePronto. Pinto, Duster, Gremlin, Nova. Don't just sit there, come on over. <laughs> all the time now seeing you here in person is wonderful this is really exciting you know you guys are this is just an example you do so many extravagant things to sell your cars tony made me think of something maybe this is too far out there or whatever but it's a kind of a crazy gimmick and it's the kind of thing i bet you do and i don't think it's been done why don't you and i think the people would respond pretty pretty well why don't you give me a car right here on the show just give me one hey, that's a great idea Has, has that, has that ever happened? Has anyone ever done that on a show? You should check that out. I don't know. I think that, that's a first. I could use one, too. Just and we could mention the fact where we got them. That's exactly it. Why don't you just do that? Give us each a car right here. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Because we could use it. I'm serious. Tony, look me in the eye. <laughs> Tony, seriously. I, I wouldn't kid about that. That's a great idea. A nice new one kind of thing. <laughs> the publicity alone would be worth yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we'll be right back after these words. You could also like have an eight by ten glossy, and I'll say, "Hey, to Tony, thanks for the car." And be right up there, same with Jerry. Thanks for smooth riding, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> there has been a lot of discussion in recent years about the lack of good roles for women to play in the movies and on television. My next guest has overcome that obstacle with a great deal of talent. She's always busy in motion pictures and TV, but she works year-round with women's groups to help other actresses get started, which I think is wonderful. Yeah. Please welcome Miss Barbara Feldon. You came on a great night. We may all get free cars from the DFP. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking good. That's the case, maybe. This is great. Well, it's great for us because uh, it's very rarely that people will take the time on a show to focus on women, and I'm very grateful, and I thank you very much for that. Oh, sure. our pleasure. We'll have the camera focus on you and the time. And the time. <laughs> That's great. Um, Barbara, how one-sided is this employment situation for women in show business? Well, it's, it's really startling. Uh, the latest statistics from Screen Actors Guild show that of all roles on television, only 25% are women's roles. Mm -hmm. That means 75% of the time that you're watching television, you're seeing men's faces. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, naturally, we'd like to even, even that out a little bit. Absolutely. I, I think she's right. I think that that's a very, very unfair statistic. Oh, it is. And I'll say it is a problem. I, I think probably a good way to even this out is to provide some more roles for women. <laughs> I think that's what she's getting at, Jerry. Well, all right. 
and it would probably uh, help a lot of the women who are in um, acting to find out how you got started. Uh, for instance, what was your first big TV break or oh. acting break? Well, the first, the first uh, role that I did on television was uh, a show called East Side, West Side. Oh, and it was, oh, and speaking of women, it was a very interesting role because she was an independent woman. She was an actress, mm -hmm. and, um, and sh then she met this man and then um, continued her career. Well, that's great. Who else was on that show? Uh, George C. Scott. It was his oh, that's right. Now I remember this Ooh, show. Yes. Yeah, well, George C. Scott was great. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. he's terrific. Did you see him in Patton? Man is amazing, yeah. Did you see him in Patton? Change his whole face and everything. What yeah. He really got into that character, yeah, too. Wow. Yeah, well, okay. well, you know, in those days, I think, uh, when, I, when I say in those days, this was more than 10 years ago, it seems that before, there seemed to have been more really serious roles written for women, roles that were able to flesh out women, if you'll pardon the expression, no. uh, a, little, <laughs> a, a little better than they do today. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. So what else did you do after East Side, West Side? Uh, let's see. Uh, I get, well, I got very spoiled, actually, because I had a, a very nice role the next time, too. An, another woman who had a, a, a serious profession. It was in The Nurses, and mm -hmm. I played a, a head nurse in that. Who played the... Um the doctor in that. Um. Darren McGavin. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. he is so good. <laughs> The Night Stalker. Do you remember yeah, that he one? Did the Night Stalker. He did a couple of series yeah. and everything. He yeah, was he here. A we have to get him on the yeah, show. Yeah, let's now get that him on. I want to find out how they did it. Okay. Listen, one of my favorite characters uh, that you played, and I mean this very sincerely, was uh, Agent 99 in Get Smart. That was it. difficult to do to play comedy that beautifully and you did oh, a wonderful job nice. yeah, I, I really i really enjoyed 99 she she took up um, a few years of my life and i and i have very fond memories of that i was very fortunate that to was do. wonderful i've always wanted to ask you uh, what is um, you know i saw you on this show what's don adams really like <laughs> He's a delight. He's Isn't a wonderful actor, and he was terrific to play comedy with. He makes now, me laugh. Yeah. yeah, he's he's very funny. And also, on that show, as a matter of fact, the roles on that show were very interesting because um, they did not denigrate 99. Even though she was his sidekick, so to speak, yeah. she, she really was, like, on top of it all the time, and he depended on her a great deal. She was the brains. Yeah. Yes, really? to some extent she was. And well, actually, it was like the Charlie McCarthy to Edgar Bergen. You know, he seems to be the dunce, but he's one of the funniest lines. Let me ask you something. Um, <laughs> let me ask you something, and I think this is a question, kind of a, a, an actor's question. You're so darn good in comedy. Uh, do you also like to do drama, dramatic roles? Oh, I love doing drama. As a matter of fact, I began as a dramatic actress. Uh, I think I love comedy because comedy is like you get high on comedy. Sure, you know, right, it's really sure. fun to do, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I think... <laughs> I think in a, in a serious role, you have maybe sometimes more of an opportunity to develop a character that has more depth and dimension mm -hmm. sure. than you do in comedy. Sure, yeah. You know? <laughs> I think uh, one of the roles that I, I had an opportunity to do that I was very grateful for was playing Grover Cleveland's wife in a series called Profiles in Courage. Oh, oh President and Grover was, Cleveland. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who who, uh, who played Grover? Uh, Carol <laughs> Archie? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah, now we're talking acting. <laughs> that guy is so good. He makes Archie Bunker just come to life. That's a, you've had a lot of He opened of up his own bar now on the series. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. But every week something goes wrong. We'll have to get him yeah. on, huh? But, you know, actors love uh, to sink their teeth into a role like playing a president. So many actors must l love to grab hold of that. Sure. Like, who was Raymond or Massey? did wife. Yep. Ra Raymond Massey Thank did you. Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Vaughn Meter did JFK. Right. Um, Paul Winfield did uh, Martin Luther King. Jerry, Jerry, Martin Luther King was never president. I, no, I suppose you're right. I don't think that matters too much because I don't think too many people watch that one. No. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> listen, I think that your cause is a very, very important one. I hope everyone out there, so we're so darn close to Hollywood. I wish those uh, guys up there who think they know so much about what they're talking about should listen to you a little closer. I agree That's with right. you. And I want to thank you for being on the show. It's been a real treat. Can you stick around a little bit because we've got gum and candy? Oh, I'd love to. And, uh, <laughs> these things over oh, here are celery this. with cream cheese. And, uh, okay. Jerry? Jerry? Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about the used cars we may get. I'm just hoping... <laughs>
In some way, I hope we've been able to help uh, illustrate this problem in just our little way. <laughs> yes, okay? you, you really have been. Thank you very much. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Well, it was nothing. We'll be right back after this word. Don't go away. Thank you, Happy. <laughs> Just pointing out to Barbara here, she is in the industry, uh, that uh, this, of course, is a replica of a camera. It's sold here in one of the studios up in Hollywood, and it's gold-plated, and it sells for $7.40, and I think that's a pretty good bargain. <laughs> oh, we can get a dozen. <laughs> you know, there used to be a song that asked the musical question, I wonder who wrote the Book of Love. I and think, actually, the lyrics were, I wonder, 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 wonder who... Who wrote the book of love? <laughs> Which you never hear anyone talk like that, but somehow in a song it well, look, sounds Jerry. okay. <laughs> Our next guest didn't write that book, uh, but he certainly could have. He runs the Vagabond Male Escort Service here at El Tacoma. He's been seen on the arms of more women than a Spidel Twistoflex. <laughs> Listen, please welcome Mr. Jason Shine. <laughs> I'd send him a man. But I don't know what order these go in, so I'll just fake it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Jason, and Mrs. Shine, hi, welcome. You must be very proud of your son. <laughs> Jerry, uh, he runs an escort service. And this is not... Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> is my face red? I, this is an actor's nightmare sure. to say something like that. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I hope you understand I would never said anything like that if you hadn't been twice his age. <laughs> Jerry, I don't think he's 11. <laughs> Listen, picking up the pieces here, uh, Jason, I gather this charming lady is your escortee. Uh, Barth, let me introduce you to Mary. Hello. Hello Mary. Nice. You called at four, Mary called at five, and it was a toss-up whether to do the show or not, and hey, Mary pays. <laughs> ah. So in that respect, you did the right thing, Jason. Listen, um, big question, how did you get into the whole male escort business, for crying out loud? Wow. Well, let me play back my tapes and see. Well, I... <laughs> Basically, I started off a long time ago. I tried to do the nine-to-five work trip, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's really a hassle, though, man. I'm, I miss four or five days in a row. They get really bummed out. <laughs> yeah. So you got fired? Yeah, bummer, really. Uh, it took me... Well, after about 15 jobs, I, my karma worked itself out. And I, I basically realized that fired is my bag. <laughs> fired, uh, I am, or fired is who I am, basically. <laughs> Brother. Um, listen... <laughs> So you're saying that as far as changing your life, it was sort of like Shazam in a pink slip, is that it? Yeah, basically, that's it. It really tripped me out, you know. Mm -hmm. I, but after a while, I couldn't deal with the fact that what if the chicks wanted me to pay for everything, you know? Yeah. It would really kind of blow me away if they asked me, wow, man, what do you do for a living? And I couldn't say, well, I get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't really knock them out. It'd uh, be something less than a career, in a way. Listen, uh, I take it you did, obviously, overcome your fear of chicks, which I uh, don't think that's the proper word. I think it's women, and I uh -huh. think that's what they like to be called now. How'd you do it? Well, basically, uh, I was in a singles bar one night, and I was doing tequila shooters. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, um... I was sitting there, and this really foxy mama walks up to me and says, Hey, sweet cheeks, what do you do for a living? And all of a sudden, I had the cosmic flash, zam, the dust cleared, and all of a sudden I said, Hey, I live. That's what I do for a living. You live for a living. Right. <laughs> That's beautiful, isn't it? Huh? That's marvelous. It basically goes along with my philosophy of, like, where you are is where you is, you know. Where you are is where you are. Yeah, that's, you have to, time is like a river, you've got a body surf in it, you know what I mean? Absolutely, and where you've been is just back there, that's another yeah, place. Yeah, be there now or be there later, whichever mm -hmm. one. And where do you go from here? I don't know yet, but I'm... Uh, uh, where you will be. <laughs> <of course. laughs> wow, you're really tripping now. Be there then. <laughs> Fabulous. Someday, if we can yeah. do it. It's like but a it's, continuity, you know? It's nice to have you here now, I, I think. I yeah, hope. You are here now, aren't you? If not, I'm a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> we won't have to pay you. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, 
What are some of the packages you offer with this escort service? It sounds fascinating. Well, we've got some uh, wonderful ones. We've got um, the Surf and Sup, or Surf's Up, whichever one that is. <laughs> it goes from the economy to the deluxe, which is uh, Chateaubriand, Champagne on a yacht, to the economy, which is basically cream cheese, Calistoga, and a rowboat. boat. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little anxious here. Sure she is. <laughs> we also have another package. I taught her how to say that, too. Say it with me now. <laughs> say mellow one time, mellow. <laughs> She's incredible, really. Of course, you perform a wonderful service and make a lot of people happy. Um, but is there that... A little special someone oh. that kind of got Jason around her finger. Come the on, be honest. special old, old lady, I mean young lady. I don't mean the old lady, yeah, of course. <laughs> young. Well, there is that, that special one who got me going, yeah, the one who taught me what it is, the, the, the nature of love, as it were, yeah. Could you tell me that nature in just a second? We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're back. <laughs> Just have a moment here to uh, thank our very special guest, Barbara Feldman, for coming by. And best of luck with your, your movement there. That crusade it sounds like a good one. The DeProntos, as far as you two are concerned, you can take your car and just keep it on the lot because uh, Jason here is going to give us a ride home, okay? On his date, he says there's going to be no hanky-panky anyway, so he can just put us in the back seat, be no problem. I appreciate that. We'll see you tomorrow night. We'll I'd see like you tomorrow to night here, too. And uh, on a Jerry Hubbard, everybody, thank Basically, you very much. Good night. Right on it. Every single day in America.